it's finally here what's going on everybody this is Jay from Maji and Jay today the purpose of this video is to review the Yumi hammer that I received about two weeks ago from the website coolicool.com the phone has a tremendous price at only $140 and it has great specifications as well including the MTK6732 it comes with 2 gigabytes of RAM 16 gigabytes of internal storage and so on but before I jump to that I would like to show you that this thing here came with a tempered glass it was already included with my purchase I'm not sure if you guys are going to get this or maybe this was only a promotional offer but you must contact coolicool.com and make sure that you guys will receive one of these and also came with a case and the case is made by the manufacturer this is very nice it is a thin case it doesn't seem to be very protective it looks quite cool but at least the bag will be protected against scratches so again guys make sure that you contact coolicool.com and make sure that they will include this for you already and now getting back to the device on the front here we're going to find a 5 inch it is a 5 point multi touch screen and it has a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels it is IPS OGS and also comes with dual glass and the outer glass is going to be the Corning Gorilla Glass number three now the manufacturer claims that this device is impact proof but this is nothing that you guys want to abuse I will say this is only for accidents this is in case you guys drop it from pocket height and so on this is designed to survive but please guys do not abuse it because the phone it is still made of glass on the top you're going to find the ear speaker we have the 3.2 megapixel sensor camera together with the proximity and light sensor and I believe you have a notification LED light between the camera and the ear speaker on the bottom you're going to find the menu key the home key and the back key now this is something that I do dislike that they don't light up but that's okay I can still live with it now taking a look on the left side of the device we find here nothing it's going to be absolutely plain we just have a metallic frame and it is very very stylish I have here the Echo E04 and you guys can notice that both of these devices have a very very similar style when it comes to the sides and also the top as well as on the bottom and also the sides with the exception that the E04 has the speakers on the bottom but they look quite alike except that this one also has a bigger display it is a 5.5 inches and the review and giveaway announcement is coming very soon so make sure you guys stay tuned for that now jumping back here on the top you're going to have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack we also have the charging slash data port and it's also going to support OTG and now taking a look on the right side of the device we're going to find something that I really don't prefer we got the volume rockers and the power button located on the same side I usually prefer that the power button at least is on the opposite side I really don't care which side it is I just want them separated that way I don't get confused with the volume rocker then on the bottom you're going to find here nothing it's going to be basically plain we only have the main microphone and the quality of the main microphone is great you guys are going to see that in just a moment on the video test that I completed looking towards the back we're going to find a 30 megapixel sensor camera we had the noise canceling microphone right above it we do find the dual LED flash now the LED flash is quite poor and you guys are also going to see that in just a moment here we got the Yumi logo on the bottom says hammer and then we got some information on there says designed by Yumi in China and we do find the loudspeaker opening the back cover we're going to see that this phone is a dual stem dual standby device and yes here we have it we can notice that it is a dual sim dual standby device one of them is going to be the micro and the other one is going to be the regular size supports tf cards up to 64 gigabytes and here removing the battery we're going to notice that the milliamps it is claiming to be here a 2250 power milliamp battery but in fact it's going to be a 1750 milliamp battery and when i did the unboxing i did mention it guys that this battery is very very light and that's one of the cons about this device that the battery is very very cheap it's not as good as i thought it was going to be and that's again one of the first cons that I noticed about this phone the second cons is that here in the USA we're not going to get 4G LTE but other than that I think it's a very well performing device and now here just to take a look around the device we can see down the bottom we have that 3D sound speaker which is very very good quality uh, we do find here the metallic frame and as you guys can tell it is not very thin it is quite thick and it comes built with a lot of screws so every time you guys press on it it doesn't feel like it's going to break in your hands so now with that being said, let me go ahead and install the battery here so that we can power on the device and we can take a look at the boot logo. And now as we power on this device, I would like to give you guys some specifications. So let me go ahead and boot up the phone and we're going to find here the logo and it is very simplistic it is made by Yumi uh, this device comes with the MTK 6732 and like I said earlier it comes with 2 gigabytes of RAM and it has 16 gigabytes of internal storage the GPU is going to be the Mali T760 which is great for gaming and also has the Android KitKat 4.4.4 we're going to be confirming that in just a moment so for right now we're just waiting for the device to boot up and here it has booted up already it took I would say about uh, 20 to 25 seconds so it is fairly fast now 
Now here looking at the lock screen, we can see that we don't have a lot of toggles this time. It is a clean version of the Android KitKat 4.4.4. We don't have any toggles whatsoever. The only option that we have is to just unlock the device. On the top you got the time and also the date. Unlocking the device, we can see that this operating system is very nice and snappy. I do have several applications already installed on here and some of them are requiring a lot of RAM. And the RAM on this device is great because right now I do have available, I would say almost one gigabyte last time I checked. So let me go ahead and confirm that with you guys one more time. Let's go here into running and right now I have available after all the applications that I have installed, I have actually 461 uh, I do apologize for that. It's 1.4 gigabytes. So I do have more than a gigabyte available and that's uh, with all these applications already installed on here. Now none of them are open yet. As a matter of fact, the task scaler should be empty by now. Let me go ahead and check that with you guys. And the only thing that I have open on here is settings. So that's why maybe the RAM hasn't been used yet. But sometimes when playing games and so on, I still have about one gigabyte, which is sufficient. And the device is running very, very smoothly, like I mentioned earlier. So here, let's go ahead and check the score that I got from the Intuitive Benchmark test. It was a score of about almost 32,000, which I think is quite great. And this has already uh, deleted the test that I completed. So I'm going to fast forward the video for you and test that again so that way you guys don't get bored. And now with the score finalized, this is exactly what we got here. It was 30,978. I have gotten to where it was almost 34,000, but this time it was a little bit lower. So that sounds about right for the MTK6732. If you go here into devices information, we're going to find the brand. We also got the model, the Android version. Everything is correct on this device except the battery. The battery is not a true 2,250 milliamp battery. As I mentioned earlier, it's 1,750. So yes, here we're going to continue scrolling down. We can see all the sensors supported, but for that, I do have this application, which is my favorite. It's called Android Sensor Box, and it's going to give us the true uh, sensors that we have supported in this device. And as we can tell, the only ones not supported is the temperature sensor, the gyroscope, and also the pressure sensor. Also, this device comes equipped already with the uh, hot knot capability. Here we have the notifications for Android. When we go here into the toggles, we can see it right there. And right now it has been turned on. We're going to be testing it later on with my Echo E04. For now, let's go here into settings. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom. Let's go ahead and confirm the operating system. And yes, we can see that it is the Android KitKat 4.4.4. So something that I didn't like about the display, guys, is that it is not matching here with the white bezel. As you guys can see, we do have a black border around it. So when it's off, it looks very nice. But then when you turn it on, it's a little bit ugly, I would say. I really wish that they could fix this. Uh, as a matter of fact, I would recommend if you guys don't like the black border, just to get the black color version, as you cannot see it. And now, as I mentioned on the unboxing video, this device came already pre-installed with the Play Store and many other Google applications, including YouTube. And also came rooted out of the box, so I didn't have to worry about that. That was very, very nice by this company, or at least the seller. I think this was completed by Cooley Cool and not Yumi. Uh, here we can also see that if you go to the Antutu tester, we're going to confirm the multi-touch of this device. And right now, it is a five point, and it doesn't let me go above that. So yes, it is a true five point multi-touch screen. And these are applications that I normally use to uh, get the correct information. Uh, let's go here into the stock applications. We do have the calculator already on here. Then we also find the clock application. So everything is very similar to what we have seen on many Chinese devices. Uh, let's go back to the toggles and here we can find the remaining of them. I already gave you guys a quick glance. Let's go back on settings and let's confirm all the languages supported. And here we can see also the toggle for the hot knot. And right now, like I said before, it's turned on. Uh, we also have gesture sensing. We're gonna get into that in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and check the languages. And let's check everything that we have available. That way you guys can determine whether or not this is going to be great for your country or not. Have in mind that this device is going to support 4G LTE in certain countries like Europe, I believe Canada, China, and so on. But here in the United States, it is not supported, unfortunately. So going back here, let's go and check the internal storage as well. And it has 16 gigabytes. And out of the 16, you only have about, I think it's about seven gigabytes available. As a matter of fact, it's shown here 12.6. And that's because I did a restore already on this device. So there we have it, guys. The storage is great as well. And it is also upgradable up to 64 gigabytes. So here we got the GPS. The GPS on the road was working perfectly well. I don't have any complaints whatsoever. The signal was very fast and I didn't have to install faster GPS or anything like that in order to customize it. It came like this right out of the box. But have in mind guys that I also got this device rooted out of the box so they could have maybe customized it. I'm not sure if they did, but at least it is working well for me here in the USA. And right now I have it off. So let me go ahead and turn it on for you guys. So that way you can see that from inside of the house, it is working like a charm. 
And these are things that sometimes I do in order to save some battery. So let's go back here once and there we have it. The GPS already read 16 satellites and right now it is locking a signal or attempting to. It does take, I would say, within 30 to 45 seconds before it locks the signal successfully. But yes guys, outside is going to work perfectly well. And now with that being said, the next thing we're going to talk about is the 3.2 megapixel front facing camera and also the 30 megapixel sensor camera. The funny part about this camera is that when you're recording on the display, it doesn't look like it's coming out very well, but when you put it on your actual computer and you download all the photos and the videos that you have taken, they actually are quite nice. And of course I have provided some picture samples on the description down below so that way you guys can check it out. So let's go ahead and head on to the park and test the camera. And now testing the 30 megapixel sensor camera of the Umi Hammer, we can come to the conclusion that it is a great sensor. Now the funny part is that when you're recording, whatever is showing on the LCD looks a little bit distorted, but when you put it on the PC, it looks a lot better. Here the focus, we're going to see that it is automatic. We don't need to press on the screen to get it focused. It's working perfectly well. The colors, the saturation, everything is great on the sensor. And now let's test the front facing camera. And now we are testing the 3.2 megapixel front facing camera of the Yumi Hammer. And we can come to a conclusion here guys that this camera, the colors are a little bit too dark like many Chinese devices. Have in mind that this is only a 3.2 megapixel sensor. It doesn't have the best quality out there, especially for recording. I would recommend this only for selfies and not recording, but for the most part it's doing its job. And now that the camera test has concluded, I would like for you guys to please on the comment section down below, let me know what you think about this camera. I think it's great and also after downloading the pictures from the computer, I noticed that it was a little bit better than I anticipated. So here I'm going to show you guys some pictures and of course these pictures have been provided below so that way you guys can check them out. As we can see here they appear to be, um, I would say overexposed. They have a lot of white uh, on them as you guys can tell but on the computer they do look a little bit different and this is something that I was looking forward to so that's very very cool about this camera the front facing camera it is still I would say poor on the uh, brightness side uh, items do look a little bit too dark now when taking selfies and not recording it's a lot better but before we get to that let me show you here that this is in fact a 30 megapixel sensor camera as we can tell right there also on the top we do have uh, some features basic ones that we see on Android like beauty mode or beauty face mode uh, we do have panorama mode and so on now here jumping into the front facing camera you can see that it is a lot better when it comes to pictures and recording is not that great but we already know that and now with that being said about the camera here we'd like to show you guys i run the operating system i would like to play with some applications and games so that way you guys can see how well it is performing right now and of course on the comment section below let me know exactly what you guys think remember that i am reviewing a device that only costs 138.99 to be exact with you guys so it is truly affordable let's get started and let me know what you guys think
Guys, now that we saw some of the performance of this device, the next step will be here to open YouTube so that we guys can listen to the sound quality of the device itself, of the loudspeaker. It is quite decent. It's not, I would say, the best out there, but yes, it's going to do its job and it is way better than many other Chinese devices that I have tested before. So here, let me go ahead and open the last video that I completed, which was about the quadcopter, which is a nice quadcopter. And here we're going to go ahead and increase the volume to the max. You read the labels on the food you eat, but do you know what's in your skincare? Naturals, a line of nutrient-rich skincare with pure, naturally derived ingredients, carefully chosen and clinically. And here we have the video. It does play it up to 720p. There we can see the quality. We have to admit that the sound quality of the speaker, it is not bad at all. And now that we're done with YouTube, the next test would be to complete a hot nut transfer. And for that, I have here my Echo E04, as I mentioned earlier. So let me go ahead and unlock the device. We're going to see on the top that I do have the hot nut logo on there. That means that yes, it has been turned on already. So let's go here into, actually on this one, let's go into the pictures. And let's transfer this picture. This was the last one that I took at the park. So all we have to do is tap here on this little hot nut logo and we pair them and we had to leave them on for about I would say two seconds and a half and here we can notice from the top guys that it is currently connecting and it takes about five to ten seconds to complete and it has completed so here we can see the picture the same as the one I have on the Yumi hammer so with that being tested the next thing we're going to complete here is a weight test or check the weight of the device so that way you guys have an idea of approximately how heavy this phone is. So I think I have it in grams already. Let me go ahead and place it on top. And this device is about 160 grams. So yes, it is on the heavy side. It feels very nice and solid because of the metal frame. And also, if you guys have one of these OTG adapters, you can easily connect it on the top and you can add accessories such as keyboards, mice, and also gaming controls. And uh, the next test we're going to complete here, guys, is the Bluetooth. So here we, of course, have my old uh, Bose speaker. I gave the other one away to my mom, so she's enjoying it. And for now, I'm going to keep this one until further notice. So we have it on parry mode. Let's go here into settings. Let's go directly into Bluetooth. And I have connected before with the uh, Beats Pill XL. So let me go ahead and uh, hit search. And there we can see that it is starting to read it right now. So this is very, very fast. And this one only takes about, I would say, 10 to 15 seconds. That was quite fast. Let me go ahead and pair to this one right here. And the pairing has completed. So let's go back once here. Let's go into other profiles. Let's go into general. And let's complete that sound test. Once again, we're going to complete another loudspeaker test. Very decent speaker there. And I think I have accidentally turned on the flashlight, and yes, I did. So my battery consumption was decreasing fast right there. And yes guys, uh, there we saw the sound test is working great, the Bluetooth is working great, the Wi-Fi is excellent. Uh, the next thing we're going to complete here is a browser test so that way you guys can see how fast the 3G connectivity is on top. Right now I do not have the Wi-Fi connected so let me go ahead and turn it on here briefly so that way you guys can see that the signal is great. It does take, I would say, a few seconds before it connects and there we can see it. The signal is absolutely perfect, but of course we know already that on Wi-Fi everything is very fast because it's not using its own network. So, so here, here, let's go ahead and go to the browser and we can notice that I already have eBay on there. So let me go ahead and reload this page and on 3G, it was quite fast. 
Let me open another web page, which is uh, YouTube. We all know that YouTube requires a lot of data in order to open. So here we can see guys that it is not 4G LTE, but yes, it is quite fast. And it is a lot faster than many other devices that I have tested recently. Uh, let me go ahead and try here another one. Let me try pandaworld.com and let's see how that's going to work. And then we're going to try Kuliku, which is the provider of this device. Uh, Kuliku is a very responsible website. I am truly satisfied with them. Their customer service is great, at least on my uh, personal experience. Uh, so far, I haven't had any issues with them. So there we saw Panda Well. Uh, let's try Kuliku and let's check out their website. So in this corner of the house, I usually don't get that great signal, but today is working great and I'm truly excited. So there we can see guys that Cooly Cool did open quite fast for 3G connectivity. So that's great. Another test we're going to complete here is the phone call as we usually do. So let's go ahead and dial 611. Now we're going to place it on loudspeaker. But this speaker, I don't even have to get it close to the camera. You guys can hear it from right there. So the loudspeaker is excellent. Also the ear speaker is great. It sounds a little bit scratchy when you guys put it on, um, on the max volume. I am pretty sure that you guys can hear that. Now with all so the testings completed, I have to come to a conclusion that I think that this phone is totally worth the $140 that the Chinese are asking for. The performance is great, the brightness on the screen is great, the viewing angles are excellent as well as you guys can tell right now. The colors are very nice and vivid. Uh, the ear speaker, the back speaker are also great. The cameras is quite decent, I would say, at least the rear facing camera. The front facing camera is okay for selfies. But what I'm trying to say here guys is that I'm reviewing this according to the price. If this phone was $170, I would say it is not worth it. But for $140, you even get two gigabytes of RAM. So take that into consideration. And if you're going to use this as your daily driver, I would just recommend getting a charger or something that you can uh, recharge this device because the battery will be an issue if you're going to use this the whole day uh, without being at home or if you guys are on the road, whatever the case may be. I would definitely recommend an external battery or a charger and with that being said uh, please don't forget to comment down below if you guys have any questions like the video subscribe for more and I'll see you guys on the next one